Um, hello, everyone, trailblazing families and trailblazing families to be. I'm super excited to um, that we have a really cool guest today. We have Judy Smith, and uh, Judy hey, is. Hi. Oh, um, sorry. Let me turn myself off. Um, so Judy is from Canada, from British Columbia. And Judy, do you know that I'm from the Seattle area? I do, actually. Yes, just a little Not bit south. Not too far away. <laughs> nope. Um, what part of BC are you from? Just until recently, I've been from, um, I was from Abbotsford, Chilliwack area, which is right on the yeah. border. But uh, about a year and a half ago, I moved to Kelowna, BC, so more interior. Okay, got it. I've been to Abbotsford and Pinsky. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful there. Um, so Judy, tell us about your family. You've got three boys. Yes. Nope. I've oh. got um, my oldest two are sons and they're 22 and 20, almost 21. And then my youngest is um, a daughter and she is 14. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so tell, I, I know a little bit about your story yeah. that you fostered and then adopted. So let yeah. me know a little bit about your family. Yeah. Um, all three of my kids came to me through adoption. They're a sibling group of three, but they came to me as babies. So obviously they didn't come at the same time because that's not mathematically possible. <laughs> um, so they came over time. Um, my youngest, who's like I said, 14, she was definitely my surprise. Mm -hmm. I didn't get much notice on her, but um, I was fostering as well at that time and I was fostering babies. So I didn't foster my kids, but I did foster her when she came with the intent that we were going to adopt. And so that's what we did. So she, they've all been with me since they were babies. Um, you know, whether it was nine months or three months or right from the hospital, but yeah. That's awesome. One of my relatives, um, uh, fostered then adopted a two-year-old a couple of years ago. So she's cool. now four and it's really awesome to have her in yeah. our family. So, um, yeah. So tell us a little bit about why you and, because you only travel with your youngest, right? Yes. And why did you want to start traveling and world schooling? Um, just backing up just a touch. I travel with my youngest because my oldest two are adults, but they all three of my kids have special needs. So, um, prenatally they were exposed to drugs. Mm -hmm. Um, probably alcohol too, because those two go in hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And then they've all been diagnosed with autism and a grocery list of other things, which is really typical. I was going to say normal, but typical of that diagnosis because it's um, a full body disorder. Mm -hmm. And so it af affects, I mean, everybody differently, but all parts, you know, of the brain, of the body. And yeah. so <clears throat> one, they are young men. So they are living in a supportive adult situation uh, not so much for cognitive but more because of um this challenges of doing those um you know we talk about cognitive smarts for school but mm -hmm. there's also life smart smarts there's also the ability to you know cook yourself a meal and do those all those basics and have basic memory skills and things like that so a lot of those things are impacted so they live in a supportive adult situation which is you know why they're not with me, but also they're adults. So okay, good. They're good. making their own way. Yeah. Um, and I know you've been coaching people, other parents who have a similar situation in the in the past. So yes, that's one of the things that you do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I um, uh, as we were talking a little bit earlier, I am taking a little bit of a break. I still have my group supporting moms of children with prenatal drug exposure, FASD and or <laughs> autism. It's a mm -hmm. mouthful, but it's searchable. Yeah. And okay. so, um, yeah, I just, you know, have a real heart for moms because I've lived through the challenges of raising kids with those diagnoses and others, and it's not a cakewalk. And so behaviors are a huge challenge. And where I come in is um, I support moms in understanding that what we bring to it is huge. Mm -hmm. And it's not about blaming. It's about um, changing the narrative by being calm, by mm -hmm. having some skills and being able to support our kids through their brain differences yeah. that are lifelong. And we can't just go fix it, you know, yeah. and we never will. But we can make life a whole lot more livable for everybody. So yeah, did I answer your question? 
question. <laughs> yeah, I know that's great. And you know, um, one of my fraternal twins has ADHD and anxiety. Yep. So uh, the other one's a bit more neurotypical. I mean, it's, it's hard for all of any of us to be super neurotypical, but, um, yeah, uh, but yeah, it's also, again, it's maybe not the same situation as yours, but there are challenges with yes. uh, traveling and world schooling with yeah. um, a kid with, you know, any type of uh, yeah. differences, whether it's sensitive to noise or yeah. um, they get really irritated waking up early in the morning to pack and go, you know, go catch a fl- plane. Yeah. So, um, so um, yeah, I mean, so let's talk about that um, because yeah. I have other friends who have kids with special needs and I think, yeah. you know, they're traveling or they're, they want to, they're a little afraid. So we yeah. want to be inspired by you, Judy, and yeah. let us know, like, what was the impetus to get you, um, you guys traveling? Oh gosh. Um, that's a long story, but I'm going to keep it short. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm a solo parent. I was married actually for almost 30 years. So for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And when everything hit the fan, as I say, Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of reflection, a lot of thinking. And one day, I mean, I was, I mean, I was no longer fostering, but I was raising my three kids and it was nuts. I mean, I didn't have the skills that I do now. I didn't start counseling or the getting the support. I mean, I was just starting it and Mm -hmm. I hadn't made a whole lot of changes, but it would, you know, you get into a place where you feel overwhelmed and um, powerless Mm -hmm. and you don't really want to get up (laughs) in the morning. And I was there. And so one day I just went, you know what? I'm, just going to Google single mom travel and found, I found a Moya site at that point. I joined that found Chanel through that went through her training. So it was just looking for hope, looking for something else. What can I do? What is out there? You know, um, in, in reinventing myself figuring out who I am. And so that's where it started. So when Amoya had her house in Merida in 2019, I think you were actually south of us or down. I was in Playa del Carmen and I stopped by the house. I drove. After, there. I was gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just stopped by just for like one, two hours. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I saw you that you were in Playa and I went, Oh, I wonder if I should meet her. And I just, I never did wish I had, but never did. <laughs> so but I was so new to it all. And I really didn't know that was really my first step out as a solo mom with my she was, well, that was three years ago. So she was 11 at the time, you know. And so then after that, well, 2020 happened, that needs no explanation. Yeah. And <laughs> Were you in Canada the whole time there? I was in Canada itching to get out. But so I was in Canada. And then 2021, I decided that I wanted to travel longer. And Mm -hmm. so what I had done, this is getting into how I set myself up and rented out my place and stuff. We talked a little bit about that. And so, I mean, in 2019, I was living in a townhouse. Before that, I had lived in a house. Um, And I was just slowly downsizing. So I sold that, moved into the townhouse. And then I got in my head that... If I could still be in in Canada half time because of the different medical needs, and like I said, my older kids are in Canada and stuff like that, like I still wanted that connection. Um, there's got to be a way that I can travel, mm-hmm. make an income besides just my business, and be okay. And I thought, what's one asset that I have, and that's where I live. It's my yes. home. Yes. Yes. And so I um, had been talking to people about this and somebody had moved in the area that I live in now and she had talked about this and she never did it. I did. So I moved into a condo, which is about a 15 minute walk for, um, from a very large university connected Mm -hmm. to one in Vancouver. So UBC. Mm -hmm. And um, so I rent my place out from September one to April 30. So I did that in 2021 like last year and I'm doing it this year so I'm homeless okay House it works. For now. yeah <laughs> right like I don't have yeah I can't move back in my place mm. and so last year I decided that we would go to Mexico for that we were going to go to other places 
but I was really encouraged just to keep um, Mexico as my base because of my teens specific needs. Mm -hmm. um, there's an autism diagnosis. There is, like I said, the prenatal exposures, there's ADHD, there's anxiety, there's, you know, there's a lot of things, there's trauma. So there's a lot of things. And so there was some concern from my counselor that if we moved around a lot, mm -hmm. it would be too difficult on her. Yeah. So we had, we had Merida as our home base and we traveled out from there. Okay. So was the therapist, the, their fear, was it difficult to move around a bit or just be outside of Canada and go to Mexico? Or, I mean, what were the pros and cons of taking uh, your daughter to Mexico? Um, you know, I think, I mean, there definitely were challenges. I definitely see a difference between last year and this year. I think we, I learned a bit about what she needed and what I needed. Mm -hmm. um, I think language was having a language difference was challenging at times. Mm -hmm. She could also be withdrawn. So that can be difficult. We did try a school, um, which has a lot of expats in it in Merida, which it's just called Leota mm -hmm. and um, which is great. She went part-time, which is also great, but there were, and they did English and Spanish, but it's a lot different. Like the structure was different. Social skills are difficult when you, you know, if you have ADHD, if you have autism, if you have exposures, and if you have all three, it's a whole other ball game, right? And so I just really followed her lead. And that's what I do in my coaching too. Like I'm not trying to plug my coaching, but that's one of the things that I learned along the way is really to follow your kid's lead. Like you were talking about early morning flights. We don't do early morning flights if I can help it. Yeah. Because it's not in her best interest she takes adhd meds it takes time to kick in sometimes right. we've had to do it mm -hmm. but it can be hard to get a teenager that's neurotypical out of bed let alone one with it's not that often that i do it but once in a while you just, it's just yeah. like Mm -hmm. Yep. And we have too because sometimes there's you know there's hundreds of dollars difference or there's no other flight that day. Yeah, <laughs> or, exactly. right. Exactly. I'm reading the comments. Ruby says that uh, she used to be a foster mom. Thank you for all you do. It's so, hard, so rewarding. So Aww, thank uh, you. Yeah, everyone, I'm going to be asking Judy some questions, but please type in the chat if you have yeah. any questions for her as well. Um, okay, so uh, thanks for telling us a little bit about, you know, your ex experience in um, Mexico and also yeah. how you rented out your place any special thing you had to do obviously you had to find a good tenant right? yes and um yeah credit check background check I mean how do you make sure that they're not going to trash your house well I mean I had rented out a basement suite in my house before so I did have some experience with it and there mm -hmm. are definitely depends where you live like there's um usually uh, community guidelines or rules about whether or not you can rent out so it's really important for me it was really important to find a building that I could rent out and mm -hmm. so I found a building where I could rent out short term long term um, so I could do Airbnb or I can rent it out as um, a longer term rental it mm -hmm. was also important to me um, not to rent it out this is what I ran into when I was living in um, the previous community is I could have rented that my townhouse out but then I would have been renting it out without a deadline or an end date. And I wasn't ready to do that. So you really got to take stock of what, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What's going to work for you? And where do you have to go to make that work? Mm -hmm. So I needed to make some choices. I mean, I moved out of my townhouse for a whole pile of reasons, not just because I wanted to do that, this, but that was a big piece of it. Right. Um, and also be willing to take those jumps and those risks. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. some people right. will go, oh, that's really scary. But not realizing that now that I'm doing what I'm doing, it's cheaper for me to live here than it is to live at home. Uh-huh. Of course. Yeah, and really then cheaper. also because your house and pet sitting. Yes. So that's my next question about is uh, how did you get set up? Which website did you uh, do you use? And because I've been wanting to do it for a while. I mean, I've heard of trusted house sitters. I don't know if that's the one you're using. Um, my kids would love to have a dog or a cat and it's just too difficult with our travel lifestyle. So I think uh, we're going to try it uh, next time we go to a more high income country. So you're currently in Spain right now, um, yes. pet sitting. So let us yes. know how you got started doing that. 
Well, first, I'm sorry if I'm moving around a bit because I've got my laptop on a couple pillows and okay. I talk a lot with my hands. And That's so then okay. you jiggle. Don't <laughs> so, worry, don't worry. So just letting you know that. And you I get excited. On a big leather chair and I keep wanting to move around. <laughs> That's fine. And then I get excited and then everything moves. No so I had heard, I mean, the big thing when you're a solo mom, you know, or when you're traveling full time is how can you do this? How can you do it? Um, without breaking the bank yeah affordably yeah affordably right and still and have a lot of fun yeah. and enjoy what you're doing and so i mean mexico was definitely cheaper and so that was definitely possible we airbnb tell us way. how much you were paying per month for rent um Do you remember it really depended where i was at and it varied i mean there was some months it was like 700 usd and see that's the other thing too is i was thinking canadian and then so when i heard usd i'm like <gasps> but it really <laughs> still was better than what i pay back home yeah, okay um so yeah 700 and i think the highest i went was probably right at the very end it was a very nice place it was probably 1300 mm -hmm. yeah 100 so i had my car i had my car in mexico so my rent was less because we can be live further out a little bit nice. and drive in but yeah if you don't have a car you kind of need to be in a tourist area or near the beach or yeah. whatever yeah we were in merida in the yeah, city right. so it really depends you know where you where you are and want to be yeah so yeah we did definitely pay a variety and some places were definitely nicer yeah <laughs> and some and okay, it depends if you want one bed or two what? yeah house sitting you pay zero right you so pay so zero yeah. but well, you, how, how did i start you? yeah yeah tell us about that so there was a couple of things one was again chanel mm -hmm. had mentioned it and i think somebody else maybe a moyer no i don't think yeah i think it was chanel and so it was always stuck in the back of my head but i think there was some fear there i'm like oh, how am i gonna feel about going in somebody else's house you know what if they lock me in their basement <laughs> like you know <laughs> there's just me and my teen like how are we gonna you know that all those things but i think the more that i've traveled the more confident i've gotten i think also then i started oh just backing up a little bit about exploring is I really wanted to travel this year. My mm. teen really wanted to stay home and have a cat. Mm. Ah, I didn't want a cat. You found a solution. <laughs> and I didn't want, to stay. want a cat. Okay. Well, and I, I, more so I didn't want to stay home. I uh -huh. wanted to, I had kind of thought for sure two years of travel yeah. with summers in British Columbia. And so that's where it started really. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, what do you think if we travel and we take care of cats? Yes. Okay. So not dogs, but just cats. We, she said dogs, uh, cats. So yes, but a lot of places just, I'll back up. I'll get to that in a minute. So that's where it started. That's, okay. and I started to look and I'm a researcher. So, so I went to trusted house sitters that was the one that was recommended and i had asked you know someone you know where did you go through they had gone through trusted house sitters it's also recommended that you start house sitting around your community mm -hmm. like around where you are rather than you know planning to go far away because mm -hmm. then you build up a reputation mm -hmm. you start to get um references um so I was going to do that. I was going to start out by renting and uh, not renting house sitting in Vancouver. I had a three week stint with um, a dog and a bunch of cats and I broke my ankle. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so I had to cancel that one three days before, which oh, is, no. I broke my heart because of me, but also them. I don't like to leave people high and dry. Mm. So I didn't start local. Mm. I, um, came off the plane in the beginning of October on crutches, had been wheeled through the airport and showed up, but she knew at my first house sit on crutches and unable and you to climb stairs. Going. You continued even on crutches, wow. Well, like I said before, I didn't have a home. <laughs> like, oh, right, right. You had and to Kelowna was super expensive. You know, mm -hmm. it was $200 a night in Airbnb Canadian. So mm -hmm. it's like, and 
I had the clear the clear to go. So I did go. And so, you know, when I started to research backing up, I started to research, I saw that the UK is a great place to start because everybody and their dog ha, ha, has a dog or a cat or some other kind of pet. They have tons of pets mm -hmm. in the UK. And so my teen also wanted to start in the UK because they speak English there. Mm -hmm. right. And that was one of the hard things about Mexico is they don't speak English. Mm -hmm. And so, and then culture is quite different. So we, we did, we started out in the UK. I think we had about five house sits there. We went to Glasgow. We went to Milton Keynes. We went to just South of London. We went like all over the place. Um, wow. So Oxford. you took trains to get around. Yeah, we use train. We use trains and buses in the okay. UK, okay. Um, and even that, like, it was a challenge because of my own disability at that point. Yeah. Right? So, but I wasn't afraid to ask. That's a big thing: is mm -hmm. not being afraid to ask mm -hmm. to ask for help i got to help to get on trains and to get off trains wheelchairs on ren ramps wow. um same with well not so much that's why i did trains more and that's the same with house sits too you um you are interviewed mm -hmm. for a position that you apply for and you get to interview them as well so if it doesn't feel right you don't go there's mm -hmm. a couple that i turned down because I just didn't feel right about it. I didn't. And these people have it. reviews as well. They do. Okay, good. They have reviews, and also you can choose. Like it's best to be really wide open in your choices, and especially when you start. Um, I took short ones, and I still will take short ones, especially if they fit in with around the longer ones. Mm -hmm. um, also kind of mapping out where you're going to go but I was also really open because okay. you it's good to have ideas but I found it better to have like a time frame have my time frame and then what can I fit in without you know going north to south and all over the place yeah, crisscrossing too much um so yeah. in in between houses you would have you would just say at an Airbnb or hotel yes I did yeah, in the beginning, I was able to, I have a cousin there, so I could stay with her, and I was able to fit it together pretty close. I yeah. usually try to get into a community the day before the sit, they want me for the sit, mm -hmm. so that if something goes wrong, that gives me some time to get there. And so we'll Airbnb or um, booking.com it or whatever for mm -hmm. that night. Okay. And then we'll go and see them and everyone's different sometimes they want you to stay in their house the night so they can show you the routines sometimes they want you to show up before sometimes they don't want to see you at all um i haven't had yeah there was one the first one i went to she says i've never met the people that come to my house she met me <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah so it's really varies mm -hmm. um and you're like they don't pay you you don't pay them they usually have a house guide so and what the expectations are and also you can read that before you go so when you look um when you kind of picked out where you want to go or if you want to go anywhere you can do that as well then um they put in like what your responsibilities are what um you will have at that destination one of the things i always look at is is it walkable what's it close to because i don't have a car mm -hmm. And so uh, they, um, if it says car needed, I just pass. That's usually the first thing I look at is, mm -hmm. do I need a car? What's the location? And then I go from there. But that's a deal breaker. I mean, if I can't get around. Of course. I've heard that some sits, uh, they let you use their car. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. The last, the one, we were in Denmark over Christmas. And she said that we could use the car for uh, shopping and for if the pet needed you know, medical. I chose not to. They had bikes. I used their bikes oh, nice. instead. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's good too. Um, Europe is pretty good as well. That's a little bit more stretched out. Australia is pretty good for house sits, I hear. Mm -hmm. US is good, but I really didn't want to go to the US. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand that. So um how what was the experience like? What were you in nice places? Did you ever stay in a place that was a disaster with a difficult pet or I don't know like wasn't what it appeared 
Um, because that's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid to go into a pigsty and then say, okay, you, we want you to clean the house as well. I haven't had that. Okay, good. Um, you also do write a profile of yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I've watered plants. I've been afraid I was going to kill the plants, but they've been fine. Okay. Um, pets. No, I think it, it, we've been really fortunate. I think I do interview. I mean, I'm pretty flexible with how, what the house is like. Like I'm not super clean. I'm not really dirty. So I, I can kind of float either way. I'm flexible that way. Mm-hmm. Um, this sit, I love this sit. The view of um, the bay is, it, we're in San Sebastian. It's just phenomenal. Yeah, and the food there is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't eaten as much. I have a picky. Oh, She's not okay. some, right? So I'll go out on my own sometimes. <clears throat> but our view is just phenomenal. She is definitely one of the more particular ones that I've been mm-hmm. with okay. um, in terms of how she's laid things out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, often they want pictures of their pets. I'm totally fine with that. I just, you know, snap a few things, write a few comments. Um, you really have to get a sense of who they are and what they're looking for. And can you meet that? Mm-hmm. Can mm-hmm. you do it? Right. Because right. You want to honor that request because otherwise you're going to have frustration on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. And also like when you go into somebody's home, you're going into their home. Mm -hmm. So I don't clean out their cupboards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I'll use things like salt and pepper and basics, but I buy my own food. If I use something, I'll replace it or I'll ask them if it's okay. You know, you just, you really want to have that respect there. Not right. just for the review, but that's how you want to be treated. Of course, as well, yeah. Right. And, you know, so for these favors you're doing for them and they're doing you a favor by letting you stay there, you're saving quite a lot. Yes? Oh, a ton. And that's one of the reasons we went to Europe as well is because we can afford it. And mm-hmm. we've done now, right? And I, we might have been able to before, but it's a whole variety of homes that we stay in. This is a, a fairly small apartment, but it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, the view is amazing. We've stayed in a um, just in Bromley, just south of London, and it's that's the place to be. Apparently, it was an older home. It was mm-hmm. two cats, big yard, mm-hmm. and they had all the latest appliances. They were a doctor and a nurse. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. We loved it there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just like a real variety of places and And some are old you're taking care of cats you don't have to walk them so much right no we don't much more easier you can kind of go out and about a bit more right yeah and you do i mean the more you're willing to do the more options you're going to have right and so um there are so many different kinds of animals you can take care of there's farm animals yes (laughs) there's cats dogs there's guinea pigs there's fish um we've done chickens um so we've done fish and chickens and cats so great experience for your daughter you know so how much fun we we need to do that because my my girls they've been really wanting well for a while it was dogs now they're really wanting cats and we go to cat cafes and you know we yeah, pet did that. cats on the street in istanbul or here in bulgaria and they really want to spend more time so i think we're gonna have to sign up we're going to italy in a bit so we're gonna oh, that's to that. yeah that's awesome i did find that like what i was saying that last year was harder this year is definitely easier and she's more content. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that it's a number of things, but I think that being with pets has been huge. Pet therapy. Totally. It's huge Mm -hmm. to have that. Like for me, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. I can just walk down a street in another country and just love this and talk to people in the grocery store and fumble my way through and and be animated and I love that but she like she's a homebody and she loves to have cats around her so this has been great and I think that again if you have a child with special needs Mm -hmm. knowing what they need not what they want Mm -hmm. because we often will say they want this or they want that or they're being um, picky or they're being selfish or they're being, we label our kids, not really realizing that often it's a deep need for them to be able to regulate and calm their body and be okay. 
Yeah. And so this has done it for her. Now we are going to Turkey. We will be Airbnb it okay. for three weeks. And then we're in Athens for four weeks and we're house sitting in Athens and it's a dog. So that will be our first dog. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to do a bit more dog walking and pick up poop and all that stuff. And yeah, uh, well, that'll be awesome. And maybe you can, yeah. you know, learn, learn the neighborhood by taking your dog out for a walk all the time. So oh, on cafes. Yeah, yeah, totally. And yeah. so how was your foot, your ankle? And, you know, didn't you break something else <laughs> you told me earlier? I did. In June, I broke my wrist. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's been quite 22. 2022 was interesting. I broke my wrist and then I was out of the cast for three weeks, went hiking on a local mountain in Kelowna with my sister, um, saw the view, was halfway down and my foot went and I denied that it was broken, but I did break my ankle. Is it healing now? It is healing now. I was in a boot. I left Canada in a boot, okay. in, a, in a chair. I saw all kinds of parts of airports that most people don't see. I was put on the plane on, you know, those food elevator things. That's how I was put on the plane. I was taken off the plane. Um, it, it's but I see people, I see people going down the little, whatever the thing, you know, to get on the plane in a wheelchair. Why'd they have to use a special elevator for you? They do. Oh, interesting. But the highlight was I didn't have to stand in any lines and I got to go to the front of all the lines. So wow. that's, that's been a bonus. Um, yeah. So just over time, it's gotten better. Like in Denmark, I was doing quite well and then I started biking and then I had a lot of pain again. So now I'm able to walk. My crutches are still coming, but I'm not using them anymore. Okay. I'm walking on two feet still taking Tylenol but or Advil but you know it's definitely a journey but I'm so glad that I left anyway and, and while you're traveling do you need to check in with a doctor or a clinic to have anything I didn't I, I did get an all clear before I left I did okay. have a do have a friend that was a physio but I I've really stopped talking to her about it because she's not been able to check my foot it's too okay. much time out mm -hmm. um another thing I started doing was I do yoga and I hadn't. And so I started doing yoga. Um, there's a 30 day yoga with Adrian or whatever. So I oh, did yeah, that, I in, that in January. So uh -huh. that's really seeming to help me get back my mobility mm -hmm. and get rid of the tightness mm -hmm. in my foot. Yeah. And I'll yeah. get it checked out in April when I go back, but it's improving and I'm grateful. Good. And what about your daughter's medications, getting those? Cause you, yes. um, we, you and I talked about this before getting the ADHD medication is, in some countries impossible and other countries possible, but you have to maybe jump through some hoops. So yeah. Same. Yes. Cause in Mexico, like we could get it in Mexico and I thought, Oh, that's an easy country to get in and, and, and that, and it was quite easy. It was still quite expensive though. It was about as expensive as Canada. So that kind of blew my socks off. Mm -hmm. So then when I came here, I went into a group, into an expat group, or a, I think it was an expat group because San Sebastian is so small. Mm -hmm. And I asked the question and one guy said, yeah, I go back to the States twice a year. Cause I don't want to deal with the hassle. I'm like, Oh, gosh now what I'm in for and then I talked to you which was helpful um and then I was given oh I talked to the person that lives here about um finding um pediatrician I thought I'd need to go through a pediatrician but I needed to go through a psychiatrist mm -hmm. and they um I was tossed around on the phone which was really wild because I didn't understand Spanish Oh, no. Yeah. And, you know, when you get in the automated system and you have to pray yes. like, uno dos or, you know, whatever, Trez, I'm like, I started to recognize the numbers. So it kept being zero, 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 zero. Oh, no. I finally talked to somebody. I'm like, yes. <laughs> habla so, pardon? You have to say habla inglés first. Do you speak yes. Uh, no yeah. habla espanol is the other one. <laughs> um, and so then I had to go through the private track because I needed, um, a psychiatrist for a teenager right okay. so I, I did find one she said there was nobody available hmm. um, and asked me to go back to the Canadian or the public system and I said I did that and she fit me in she oh. 
moved, I think she moved someone or put me after her last patient. I don't know what she did. Mm -hmm. I was told it would cost me about $300 or so for an appointment. I went, she didn't charge me a dime. Wow. She charged me nothing. Then um, she gave me a prescription for three months. Oh, good. For 90 days for Concerta. Mm -hmm. um the name brand not the knockoff okay which is also huge because was it i was i was so impressed it um it was euros it was about 35 for 30 35 euros for 30 okay that's pretty good um yeah yeah, i mean 50 bucks canadian I was in Southern Spain and I went to a clinic. It was easy to get an appointment and I just showed them the pill box yeah. we had and they just quickly wrote it. And I think it was yeah. 20, 30 euros. And then we got the medication and we did get the generic one. I think it was yeah. made in Germany, but you know, it yeah. was so, um, wow. Um, I just didn't want to mess with it because this is what she has had for a long time. This is what her body does well on what yeah. her brain does well on. So let's keep it yeah. the same. So I was willing and she, the, the doctor did tell me that prices have for all of them have come down, uh-huh. um, because there's more competition. Right. Yeah. And so, and I was in the end, it was really easy to get the appointment. And then there's a, a pharmacy just across the street they didn't have it there they called somebody else got it in we got it today so between mm-hmm. seeing the doctor at five yesterday and we had the medication you know one o'clock today or whatever okay. so that's pretty impressive so I thought. tell me um that's awesome tell me a typical day in your life um uh, with your daughter traveling with the cats and dogs and all that i mean are you guys world schooling are you learning are you doing any lessons or is it or just unschooling let us know about the learning and your activities during a typical day Yeah, you know, first, before I talk about that, I'm going to say that, because it's going to kind of give context to everything else. I was a classroom teacher in the elementary school for 20, almost 20 years. Yeah, pretty ingrained into how school should Mm. be done and needs to be done. Yeah, it took a long time for me to unwind from that. So last year and this year, I, um, in British Columbia, you can register. And so when you register, that's true homeschooling. You can do whatever you want, right? Mm -hmm. Darn well, please. Um, So I chose to do that. And because uh, there's trauma and there's special needs, um, I've really chosen to take um, the what's the word I say low key way. Mm -hmm. Um, So it is definitely more unschooling. Mm -hmm. Um, This year, she's taking much more interest in um, where we're going and what we're doing. They Mm -hmm. have eyewitness books here. I think she has about 40 of them. You know, the, do you know what I mean by the eyewitness ones? Mm -hmm. They, um, they're a country on the, each one is a different country or part of a country or a city. And there's full of pictures and what you can do and traditions and culture and stuff. And she's been reading those. Mm -hmm. There is a psychology book, textbook. She's Uh been reading that one. So I'm like, you know what? This is where she's at. We've done a little bit of math. Um, We still have a counselor that's involved that I talk to weekly. And so we get support that way. So really, we've been focusing on emotional health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because... um, we can so much focus on cognitive ability and cognitive education. And I did as well, that we forget that there's emotional maturity, that there's, you know, there's other kinds of maturity that we really need to give attention to as well. Mm -hmm. And with our kids with autism or prenatal exposures, there's a large gap. There's lots of gaps, Mm -hmm. lots and lots of gaps. Mm -hmm. And, um, parts that are lagging behind other parts. And so it's really important to give time to mm-hmm. that. And so that's where my focus has been. And so between, I mean, we have an online school that I'm connected to. So between that special needs coordinator, myself and the counselor, we've just really, they really just told me, relax, take it easy. Yeah. You know, there's lots of time. We may just have her do the um, the adult track and graduate, you know, when she's 18, 19, we may do that. 
I'll see how it goes. Um, but right now it's emotional and yeah. a little bit of education here and there, real life. So you're still able to get support online from, you know, the therapist or the counselor from abroad. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because that's difficult for us in the U.S. <laughs> Once well, you're out of state, they're not happy to talk to you. And I see your cute little cat in the background in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's one of them. There's two here. Oh, oh cute. Okay. They're getting hungry. Um, that's okay, though. They'll be fine. Uh, yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons I wanted to stay connected to Canada. So I'm still there enough time so I can get the supports that we need because of that right um also because of autism in british columbia we get something if you uh, apply you can get autism funding and mm -hmm. so that's what takes um pays for excuse me the support mm -hmm. there so okay. yeah that's why i am still connected that's awesome get that. Yeah. So um, I know we've been talking for a bit. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but what would be the advice that you have for anyone who is interested in house sitting or um, traveling with a special needs kids? Because those are kind of like the two main things we've been talking about. Okay, let me let me tackle the special <laughs> needs kid first. <laughs> um, you know your child best. And I think it's really good to take a step back and really think it through. Um, because I think some situations are definitely diff more difficult to travel with than others. And you really need to, it's important to tailor your travel experience to your child's needs. Mm -hmm. And yes, fit yours in there too, right? But really, if your child's needs aren't met, yours aren't going to be met either because you're going to be pulling your hair out mm -hmm. and so for like I said she wanted to stay home have a cat I wanted to travel I found something that worked for both of us I thought outside the box yeah you know think outside the box include your child as much you know as they're able to communicate and where they're at um, in the decisions and mm -hmm. in the process get by and because then you're most likely going to go further mm -hmm. listen um know when to fold <laughs> know mm -hmm. when it's like you know what maybe not mm -hmm. you know we're talking about possibly traveling again next year so she's, on, she's liking it she's on board with this how she you is it. for the most part i mean she's kind of hitting the doldrums we're push, pushing february and she want wanted to go home mm -hmm. um we've been actually encouraged by the counselor to keep traveling because mm -hmm. they said she's doing well good and there's, you know, there's certain things that we're trying to work through. Mm -hmm. And so um, she really, really wants to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, what do you think? So I didn't want to go to Japan, but she wants to go to Japan. I said, if we go to Japan, then maybe we'll go to Australia. There's lots of house sits there. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to Australia. The spider is too, too big. Well, if we <laughs> go to Japan for you, <laughs> then uh -huh. you have to do a little give here. So just you know and give time to process a lot of times our kids just need some time to process and think it through so it's really important to to do that and especially if it's just two of you right if it, there's more it's more difficult um or can be mm -hmm. but have those family conversations right mm -hmm. so i think really find out what works for everybody mm -hmm. um house sitting what would i say about house sitting um like i said local which is a great if you, can, if you can start local that is fabulous i actually had a much easier time finding places in the uk than i did around my home in mm -hmm. Kelowna. Mm -hmm. um and also uh, don't worry if you get turned down a lot to begin mm -hmm. with yeah. you don't have experience yeah you don't, they have don't know experience. you yeah i heard that at first you might have to take the last minute sits Yep, you know, yep. like if somebody cancels their, yep. their other person and you have to just hop yep. in there um, and maybe not the best ones or maybe yep. one yep. days. Um, I mean, yep. I have a Kiwi mom friend. She's been traveling for, I don't know, probably 10 plus years with her daughter. And they have done so much house sitting that they stay at like amazing places because yep. now yep. she has such a reputation, a good reputation. Yep. And she 
invited back over and over again. So they stay in palatial places with a pool and everything. And that uh, is, that's, can't be picky. <laughs> that, and that I was alluding to that or touched on that in the beginning, right? Is you got to go where they come. And yeah. so we did, like we were flipping all over the UK because I was just grabbing whatever I could grab. Mm-hmm. You know, the one in Vancouver, we didn't do that was, we got accepted. And I'm like, that's, I was so grateful. That was a three weeker. I'm like, I'll just take it. I don't care if I don't want to walk the dog. I'm walking the dog. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, I will do it and I will do the best job ever. And yeah. so you have to really go in with that mindset is mm-hmm. that, you know, there is a service element and, and then also, you know, take ones that, you know, you can do yeah. that are going to fit. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some that I've seen with 11 cats. Yeah. I, we are not doing 11 cats. Wow. That's just not going to happen. So um, there's something that you said that twigged for me yet yeah, going where you can get them. Um, I didn't expect to get great places. Mm-hmm. I just went wherever I could because there's competition for those. Mm-hmm. I check a lot right now. They just instituted on um, trusted house sitters that only a max of five people can apply. And then it shuts it down and it says that they're reviewing applications. Oh. Some people have kind of gotten around it and then they'll start to turn people away, but they will still keep them in mind. But that way they can get more applications. It's kind of good for you if you're applying because there's only five people. You but Quick, right? And but how you have to be far quick. advanced do you try to apply? It depends. Okay. It depends like this one here in Spain. When we were in Denmark, I did not have one after because I knew I'd have six weeks before I had to go Athens. And I thought, well, if push comes to shove. I will just Airbnb it for six weeks in Turkey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I, but I really, really wanted to go to the Netherlands because that's my roots. That's where my parents immigrated from. Mm. And my daughter had shown interest. And so I really wanted to do that, but I wasn't getting it and I had one and it was too uh, short of a turnaround after Denmark Mm -hmm. and so then this one here in Spain I had applied and she had gotten somebody else and then that person had um, somebody got sick in their family and had to cancel Mm -hmm. a couple weeks before Mm -hmm. so this person here she reached out to me and said are you still available Mm -hmm. and I went it is your lucky day because I am like I was being, I didn't say that to her, but I was being selective. I think mm-hmm. I did say, I says I'm being selective because I can right now, mm-hmm. but we are really interested in yours. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we set up an interview. She went with me and I'm here in San Sebastian, right? Yeah. Um, Oxford, we got, that was a really good one. Yeah. I just, I think, you know, a middle-aged mom and a teenage daughter are a pretty good sell. Yeah, because I would think uh, maybe if you had a whole bunch of young kids running around, it might not be so attractive for the homeowner yeah. or the pet pet owner. Yeah. But um, but yeah, for your much more mature and a t- with a teenager. Yeah. And I my th- daughters love cats, so they would be yeah. totally loved on. <laughs> right. The other thing is when you put your profile together, like I know um, someone was, someone said to me, um, yeah, all they wrote was call me. <laughs> like. They said, yeah, that was a no. And yeah. so this is, might be a helpful tip because the hot ones go so fast. I've actually in um, Google Docs, I've put together um, uh, a generic blurb about it. Yeah. They do say like personalized and stuff, but it is personalized because I I update it, mm-hmm. you know, here and there. I say, you know, who I am, who we are. Um, kind of a little bit of about our journey, um, what we're planning on to do this year. So I give a bit about myself, oh, sure, you yeah. know, that we're taking care of, uh, I don't say cats, animals, um, you know, this is what we're currently doing. And so I go a little bit into depth, but I can put it up really fast mm-hmm. because, and I just change the pet names because I'll have, you know, your house looks really cute and Pookie and Snooki look yeah. awesome. I can't wait. To, you know, I'd love to meet them or whatever is yeah. you. You have to be you. Yeah. And so I do that. Um, and you know, mention and it says that in uh read through uh 
trusted house sitter, if you go with them, their blurb as to what do you put in a letter that's really helpful. Okay. Or a, yeah, yeah. Um, do you have a referral co code that you want to give us? I mean, do you get credits for doing that? Um, if not, you should get one because I've heard other people like you can get some credits how somehow I don't know whatever I guess it's a uh, you know what oh no but you do have to pay for it you do have to pay to join trusted house sitters you do and you can pay for different levels and you can I think if I gave have a referral code I think you can benefit from it I have to go take a look at it but there okay. is something that but I haven't done it in the chat in the yeah. Facebook group where this is streaming live and I just wanted to read um Kara is saying I'm hoping we can make house pet sitting work for us Michaela is six years old now uh, mm -hmm. But when we start doing this, she'll be about eight or mm -hmm. older. And then she recently joined a few different Facebook groups for house sitting opportunities. Um, and then Rebecca said, yes, emotional support and education is a focus for us. We took three years to decompress from school and to find calm and harmony. Now my daughter is in a Walder Forest school and she's ready for it. So, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So That's it's great, great uh, that the people watching this are able to, uh, you know, relate with what you're doing and be inspired by all that. I know I am because I, again, I keep saying we really need to get into house sitting because I mean, I want to go to the more expensive countries and, you know, we, we yeah. do go and we kind of whiz through, but I'd like to spend time there and not worry about the cost of living. And I think if my, um, accommodation is free, you know, and then we have, I mean, we need good, good internet. And then my kids have adorable pets to play with, you know, and we don't, we're not the type of people to go out every day doing tourist stuff. So we're happy to stay home part of the time. Um, yeah, so I yeah, think that yeah, would too. be perfect for us. So I will definitely uh, look into it maybe this spring when we're in Italy. Well, and it is really good because I don't worry about spending money on things so much. Yeah. Like when we were in... When we were in Denmark, that's a really expensive country, really yeah. expensive. But we went to um, this one place that had water slides and mm -hmm. that was like by uh, Legoland. Mm -hmm. um, we went to Legoland. We went to this place and they were costly. We ate inside, but mm -hmm. I didn't worry about it because I knew we weren't paying for the roof over our heads. Right. right, right. So it does really en enable you mm -hmm. to take that out of the equation and just mm -hmm. go for it. Right. Yeah. Like. Yeah, so that's cool. That's super awesome. Okay, Judy, if anyone wants to follow your travels or get in touch with you, is there a good way for them to reach out to you? Or do you have anything that you want to... Pro I know your uh, special needs coaching is kind of on hold right now, yeah. but is there anything that you want to share? Any social media? Um, gosh. Or they can just send you a friend request on Facebook. They can send me a friend request <laughs> on Facebook. Okay. Um, I am actually under Judith Smith. That's mm -hmm. a whole other part because um, this is a good thing to know is if your account ever gets deleted and you have to prove your identity, you better have the name that is on your legal documents because if you don't, mm -hmm. you cannot get your account back. Well, you know what, though, I, my, I go by Liz, my legal name is Elizabeth. I have in the past because I am an admin of a page had to prove my identity. And I was okay. But was they really never good. took it away from me. I, I think you're talking about getting it back. Oh, that's scary. It is getting it back if they take it away from you because somebody did something on your site on your. So I have to change my Facebook name to Elizabeth. I don't know, but I don't use Judith. Never in my life have used Judith, yeah. but it's on there as Judith. And I have in brackets, Judy. Okay. But All right. Anyway, please comment in the I Facebook. I will do that. And put your trusted house sitters and then people know how to get a hold of you. Awesome. Okay. okay well, I'll awesome do that. to talk to you. And thank you so much for sharing your story. And yes. seriously, so inspirational. And, you know, people say, oh, Liz, you're a solo mom traveling with your kids. And I'm like, yeah, but Ju Judy is, no. you know, special needs and with a broken foot or with yeah. a boot and, you know, and house sitting and all of that and having to chase down your uh, ADHD meds, you know, uh, kudos to you for just, you're so determined. You keep, you keep, you keep, you keep plugging away, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. I think some people just say, this is too hard. I'm going home. Well, I guess you yeah. couldn't go home because you rented your place out. You don't but. have a home right now. <laughs> but okay. I know, I mean, other people who are world schooling don't have, you know, a home base necessarily either. But anyway, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.